I wanted to welcome back Ms. Uh, Dr. Browner again. And um, once again, she's a patient-focused strategist with five plus years of experience developing global operational plans that have maintained a robust track with DEI recruitment goals. And joining her on this panel is Marsha Calloway Campbell. Now, Ms. Campbell is an attorney, a market research consultant, and current director of the Black Myeloma Health Initiative at Health Tree Foundation. Now, that's a myeloma patient advocacy organization. Now, together, they'll tackle the critical issue of health disparities and multi-myeloma, and will explore solutions to ensure equitable care for all affected by this condition. Now, the special treat here is moderating discussion is someone that we have an honor to have as a guest. He's a well-known as a respected journalist, author, media personality. Uh, it goes without saying, he's a man that uh, tells you what he thinks. Okay, Mr. Roland Martin, he's going to be moderating this discussion. Let's give him a big round of applause. All righty, there he is. The man, all righty. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. No, no, no. I don't sit down. I don't sit down. Uh, thank you so very much. Certainly glad. Is the music still playing? Can we kill? Can we kill the music? Yeah. Kill the music. I sound like one of the preachers. Uh, I need you to. I should have killed that. Glad to see everybody here. Uh, glad to be here uh, on the left coast. Uh, came from D.C. Uh, uh, last night uh, after doing my show, Roller Martin Unfiltered. Let me thank all the folks who watch the Black Star Network. I appreciate it. I know y'all so happy I got my own show because when I was on TV One, y'all had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to see a brother. I would come to L.A. They'd be like, say, dog, um, can y'all re-air the show? We got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to see you. So I'm now at 6 p.m., so y'all can, can actually wake up. Uh, but we're here, of course, talking Black Health at this Black Health Matters Summit. Anybody who knows me, we have always focused on Black Health on all the shows that I've had uh, in my career. We still do it uh, because uh, Kathy Hughes coined a phrase, uh, information is power. And when it comes to health, unfortunately, a lot of us don't have the information that is needed. And so many of us, we go through our lives and we have family members. If you look at many of these stats, when you look at black women and breast cancer, uh, the fact of the matter is we're dying faster because we learn later. Uh, and so that is that is the common link through so many of, of these issues, including what we're talking about today, multi-myeloma and the reason I'm familiar with this, and I appreciate this, that's my word campaign, uh, because we have to be getting information to everybody as early as possible. There's a sister out of Dallas, Kim Alexander. Her husband played in the NFL for nine years, Elijah Alexander. They were preparing for retirement. Uh, he used to play with the Raiders in Tampa, and they were in Costa Rica, and he kept complaining about his feet hurting. They kept, doctors kept saying, oh, it's from your career. He actually eventually died of this very disease because he because again finding out so late. Uh, and Marsh, I want to start right there, and I want to start with we got a lot of questions. I know, so they gave me some questions to ask. I'm not going to ask any of those questions. Um, I get paid to do this every day. Um, <laughs> person who wrote the questions, you did a great job. Not going to use them. All right. So Marsh, I want to start with you. I want to start with. Explain to people why every person here has to be the most, their most important advocate. You must be. You must be. Self-advocacy is, if you don't take care of you, nobody's going to take care of you like you. And even not even your family. So you have to know what signs and symptoms are of a lot of different diseases. And I'll talk a little later about those in multiple myeloma. But you have to know them so you can say, doctor, could this be multiple myeloma? That's a campaign my program has. If I could teach everybody in here enough to know, to ask that question. Because you said your husband, your husband, former athlete, so when he first started having symptoms, they said, oh, that's some other stuff. 
they did. 57 years old, ex-athlete, fit, worked out six, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We thought he was healthy, started not feeling well, and was diagnosed in 2017. And they said it was arthritis. Getting to that point because he had back pain. And so they said, oh, he's an ex-athlete, could be arthritis. And the other point I want to make, 57, so he was urinating a lot. And they said, oh, 57-year-old men, slightly enlarged prostate, that's why he's going to the bathroom so much. It wasn't those things. Show me a, the physical therapist showed me a scan, the x-ray, and said, look at all of, look at that arthritis up and down his spine. Those were myeloma lesions. And what y'all learned, it was a dramatic increase in protein. Yes. That protein that forms, it's, it's cancer of the bone marrow. And there's, I call it the M protein. That had formed and it, basically damaged his kidneys per, uh, permanently. It blew his kidneys out. So now he needs a kidney transplant. Denise, you're the director of DEI, clinical, uh, the clinical trials, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about the clinical trials a little bit later, but I wanna stay on this particular point here because what happens is, and Marsha and I were talking about this here, what happens is you have medical folks who say, who are you? I'm the expert. Oh yeah. I know what's better. Yeah. Or you the angry black man. Yes. You're the angry black woman. Could y'all hold it down just a little bit over there? Uh, just hold down a little bit over there with the noise so the folks over here can hear. Uh, <laughs> and, because, and, and then what happens is we then recoil and then go, okay, I don't want to say anything because I'm now ticking them off. Oh, yeah. But you have to go, you have to go there because your loved one, this is a life and death issue. Very much so. And I have to say, you know, similar to what you were going through with your husband, my dad, who has multiple myeloma, when he was showing signs, it was more cardiac involvement. So mm. he was showing shortness of breath. And this is a man who has a six pack in his late 50s, right? In his early to late 50s. And I'm like, I don't understand how- A six pack here, not a, not a, not a six pack of beer. Correct, correct. Oh, I'm just good. making sure, I mean, yes. you and said it, six pack, I was like, he was killing it. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it was interesting because a lot of times they were thinking, well, it's just heart disease. And I remember when we went to the hospital because he was showing that he had fluid on his lungs. And they were like, oh, well, you have to go to the ER. We got to get this off of you. And they started asking him questions. Well, did you have a heart attack? And he's like, no. And they kept asking the same question over and over again. They said, well, are you doing any drugs? And he says, no. And they're like, are you sure? It's going to come up in the results, you know? And I was like, hold on. So, where are you, are got you sure you're not on drugs? Right. Yep. Pretty sure. Right. And I'm like, and this is where I stepped in and I said, hold on, where are you guys trying to insinuate here? Here's a man who's coming in to you telling you he's having these heart issues and you guys are trying to say that he's on drugs. Like how, how unprofessional are you? So of course, as I start to speak up, my dad started to speak up and they're like, well, we're sorry. We didn't mean to do that. And it's like, I think, yes, that narrative of being angry, it comes up, but at some point in time, you have to be like, Hey, I'm going to be Angry. But what, you you, what you're also describing, though, and then and people have to understand how real this is. Yes. What you're describing is the literal racism that's in the medical Very industry. So. And so, look, I, early on in the opioid crisis, I remember, I mean, I, people thought I was joking, but I actually was and I wasn't. But we were literally given Tylenol and it's supposed to pain medication because doctors thought we were there for drugs. Exactly. I said, so early on, racism helped black people because uh, we weren't being killed with the op opioids. Yeah. Now, it changed a little bit later, but that literally what was happening. And so in the medical industry, racism is real. And so the stuff that questions that you were getting, black people get that. Every day. Are you on drugs? Yeah. Are you going, what are you talking about? You know, I want to add, too, when you think about this in the medical field, they always talk about, you know, prejudice or racism in a historical sense. They'll bring up Tuskegee, right? They'll, up, they'll bring up Henrietta Lacks. But I have said, this is persistent. It's right. been here, it's ingrained right. in there. And you have a lot of doctors who continue to have these certain ideas about you because you're black. And it's notion that black people have a higher tolerance of For pain. pain. Yes. Yes. That's, that's also an issue, martial arts. Absolutely. So myeloma is a journey in and of itself. And when you add the disparities, that now we're talking about, we're not seen, we're not heard. So back pain is one of the, or bone pain, and it, it, it's often in your back, it's one of the symptoms. So when you present to the ER, that's what it is. What drugs are you here? What narcotics are you trying to get? Doctors are not proactive in doing the testing to see if multiple myeloma is a possibility. Which means that what we have to be thinking about is, 
if they if you can't find one answer, I mean, I just experienced this with my mom. Mm -hmm. No, we about to start ruling stuff out. So exactly. pull a list up, not this, not this, as opposed to just accepting, oh, we think it's just this. And I got lucky with the, my dad got lucky with the cardiologist that he had came across once we got past the ER, because the ER was not the best. Once we got past them, the cardiologist did exactly like you said. He started looking at things, looking at the blood work, and said right. something doesn't seem right. So he started doing all these tests. He's like, since I have you here, I'm going to keep you here for a week, and we're going to do all these panels of tests. But he kept coming back, giving us a little bit more information to kind of keep my dad calm. Because prior to that, my dad's never been in a hospital. Right. He doesn't like doctors. So he was like, I'm here for a week. I'm with I your dad. I don't want to be doing this. So it was just really interesting that we found someone who took the time to do that. But not a lot of people are fortunate. Uh, when you talk about what are we looking for? So when I talked about Kim's husband, he had pain in his feet. And they kept saying, oh, that's tied to your career. Uh, you talked about uh, your husband as well. So what are the different um, you know, symptoms, if you will, where people started off and then, then they got to the point where they figured out that it was multi-myeloma? So this is always my disclaimer. I'm a lawyer and not a doctor, <laughs> but I promise you all I feel like a doctor now after six and a half years with him. So there are four common symptoms, and I will just quickly say them and then you can follow up. It, one is high calcium, okay? The second one is high urinal counts, your kidney numbers are high. The third is anemia, and the fourth is bone pain. If you remember the acronym CRAB, C-R-A-B, Okay, now real quickly, you can have lab work, your, your blood work done and see if your calcium and your renal levels are up, right? That's it, you can see that. Right. Anemia, just give me one second with anemia because I promise you, doctors think every, have told every black person that you're anemic. Yep. We yep. are not anemic just because of this melanin. We were not. And I okay, okay, so for the person who doesn't know, what is being anemic? That is when you're, you might need iron pills. You're, you might need the, um, your counts are low in terms of anemia. And it could be something as simple Like all as, the women who get cold need them iron pills? I'm just joking. <laughs> it Maybe could get a be blanket. as simple as you but need that's not, an iron pill. Right. So, but, so, so again, though, because uh, I'm, I'm always about how to explain for folks. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they are having a deficiency in iron, mm -hmm. again, they automatically think anemia. And they're different levels. Yep. It could be as simple as you need an iron pill, but it could be as serious as multiple myeloma. Yep. And the black specialists, myeloma specialists I work closely with, have said, push on your doctors and make them figure out why you are anemic. Exactly. And that's, again, you having to push for yourself as well. That's it. Well, but that, and, and the thing is, and I was, uh, James, then we were talking about stage, and I remember, look, when Serena Williams had a child, so it did, she rich, her husband created Reddit, he's a billionaire. Yep. She almost died in child, having a child because they were not picking up those signs. And so if it wasn't for her being a hardcore advocate, she may not be here. And I think uh, a lot of people though are afraid to push that hard because again, so many of us here know they're the experts. Yes. They know what's best. How, I don't have that level of education, so how dare I challenge them on this? Yeah, and I've had a few patients when we're talking about getting people into clinical trials as well, and how I've talked to a lot of patients like yourselves who have said, you know, what the doctors, they should know, they're 20, 30 years in the game. And it's like, but again, when you look at a lot of the medical textbooks, we're not in there, right? When you look at some of the medical research that's out there, the papers that have been published, we're not in there. Mm -hmm. So you have to say to yourself, what is their knowledge really based off on? If they don't, you have to come and talk to them about that. But there are a lot of doctors who have now gone through medical school who understand this, who are now trying to change that landscape within the medical field. But I think people, too, becoming more empowered has also challenged a lot of doctors to step their game up. Uh, Marsha, can you talk about, again, both of you are having to deal with this, but, but, but really talk about uh, the mindset of a caregiver. Um, I was talking to uh, Dan Gatsby. Dan was uh, Dan uh, was married to B. Smith, and when she got Alzheimer's, I mean, it just completely altered their life. Uh, and Dan, I would talk to Dan periodically, and Dan was like, "Roland, I need people to talk to because 
I no longer have the person who I always talk to. And so just speak from a perspective of a caregiver, what you have to do to take care of yourself when you're now having to take care of someone else who probably was always, I got it, I'm good. Yeah, caregiving is, is a care, being a care partner is a journey. It is also a journey. So first I will say a care partner to your spouse so my husband and I are high school sweethearts. I was 15 when I met him. He a Kappa? He's a Kappa. <laughs> my Kappa man. Alpha's rule. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> been, we just celebrated 38 years of marriage. We've been together 48 years. Ooh. Okay. The dynamic shift shifted. So this was my partner in life but now I'm his caregiver. And so you see me, I'm like, okay, look, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, I'm that, I'm that wife. Here's what you gotta do and I need you to do this and no, you can't drive. And he gets really tired of that. He's really glad I'm out here right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he had the crib by himself or, some, or one of your daughters there? We have three adult daughters and they're watching daddy, okay? So he's good. But what I have found for me, I wasn't the one to ask for help. I had sorors saying, what do I need? I had church family, what do you need? And I was the one like, I got I'm good. this. I got I'm it. Good. I got this. And oh. you were lying the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were lying to yourself. <laughs> Pretty much. So I'm trying to do a better job of getting what I need so I can be more gentle with him and better with him and understand when he doesn't feel well, he's really not trying to be difficult. He just doesn't feel well. And you know, that's a good, a good point because with my dad, he was very much, I'm used to doing everything on my own. And my mom, she has been like you, helping out, right? Like being at home, helping him through his chemo. He's been through two rounds of chemo. And it's been very interesting as a child of someone, mm -hmm. watching someone who is basically your Superman go through this. And sorry, just thinking about with my dad, but it's just, it's just very interesting watching him kind of be a little bit lower than what he usually has been. Mm -hmm. and having to be there for them. So for me, it's been very difficult having to balance that, that emotional weight that comes with that. But I think, you know, being there for my mother, giving her the space that she needs, which I know your daughters have probably done the same for you, but giving them that space to be able to relax, to have that breather, to be able to lean on other people, that's where I think is a child of someone who's going through this, that's the, the part that really, you know, it's hard to go through as well. And also being a, um, let's see, I can, t I, I know you a church usher. <laughs> I know you a church usher. Yes, I know you a church. So y'all gotta understand when Denise started tearing up, I was like, yo, I need you to give me some tissue. And then I look over here, she started reaching for her bag. And you know, it's two things she got in her bag. She got some yeah. tissues, and I know you got a peppermint in your bag. I, see, she got a pep. Y'all know that is a black church usher right there. She got some white gloves at home. When I saw reaching that purse, I said, she gonna pull some tissue out for the niggas watch. And the tissue came. Baby, we got it, we got it. We got church usher over here, we got it. No, no, you brought a napkin. She had some tissue. She has some tissue. That's a black church usher for you right there. She gonna walk us out in rhythm when we go out here. All right. So, oh, I see everything. Don't worry about it. So Denise, you were talking about uh, obviously watching it, but the other thing though is, it's also a different dynamic because Marsha doesn't have to experience this because she's the wife. When you're the child, yes. Because it's all, all your whole life is listen to your parents, so they are instructive, and now you like look. Oh yeah. And then you also then factor on also your job. Oh. So you're in the medical space. So now all of a sudden you like look. I know what I'm talking about. And it's been, so talk about that. Yeah, it's been really funny because my dad and I are very similar. So we're both, you know, a bit stubborn. I will say. And it's been very interesting when I have talked to him about this from a medical field. He actually, you know, he's never questioned that. And he's always loved bringing me to his doctor's appointments because he's like, I know you can answer the questions. So when they say something, I know you'll be able to challenge it. And it's been quite interesting being in there with doctors and being able to talk shop with them. 
going over the papers that they keep throwing out like, well, Stanford said this. I'm like, yeah, that's great, but it's only like nine people in that. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about the statistics. So having Maybe someone. Like, Dang, that she go again. <laughs> right? So my dad sits over there with a big smile on his face, but he's like, finally, you know, it's nice to be able to see your education coming into play. So I have to say, you know, being able to be there with him, where it's the same, I know exactly what he's thinking. I know how stubborn he can be. But I, I will say, being there for him as a, as, a, as a partner and as a child, I think it's been very interesting. And I'm an only child. So when my mom needs a break, it comes on me. And I know that as they get older, that will always fall back on me. But my parents and I have a really great relationship. And that works. For some people who don't have a great relationship, it can be difficult, but I've been fortunate in that. And, again, and a lot of times we are afraid to flex our knowledge and our expertise. Not me. Oh, I'm with, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'll flex my knowledge. I ain't waiting in lines. I ain't, wait. I ain't doing any of that sort of stuff. I'm like, people like, oh, you doing? I'm like, that's right. That's, that's what you get comes with it. Exactly. Uh, Marsha, you, you talked about that being a lawyer. So you told me, you said, I don't leave it. But I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm like, that would have been the first thing we started <laughs> with. Uh, so how, 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 give me a couple examples of how that dynamic is. I, you can put that sign down, baby. I got it. It's a clock right there. I got you. Okay. It's, it's nine minutes left. We good. Uh, Marsha, talk about uh, when, how does the temperature in the room change when Marsha says, uh, I'm Marsha the lawyer? <laughs> it does change. It does change. And I don't leave with it. I just don't do that. But there was one thing when my husband went to that hospital, a soror of mine was a nurse and she gave Marsha's an AK, y'all, if you ain't know that. <laughs> just letting y'all know. Um, okay, Marsha, go she ahead. She said, uh, here's a binder. I want you to write down everything, every person that comes in this room, I want you to take notes. So if you walked in the room, I'm like, hi, doctor, and what's your name, and what's your function? That was basically it. And I wrote down, and I wrote down. So you let the black people with a cop. I need your badge number. That's it. I need your employer ID number. That's it. Yeah. So the way I do it, Roland, I let you talk to me without knowing what I do for a living. But if I get the sense that you're talking down to me, okay, that's where I just drop it uh i'm a i'm an attorney and i keep talking and it changes so by the time my husband he stayed in the hospital when i rushed him there for one month after a few days when anybody walked in the room they were hello oh yeah they spoke to me and they said how's our patient today so they're asking me how he is he landed there what like, they were really were saying is she gonna sue our ass <laughs> If we don't get this right. We better do the thing That's right. That's really what they were saying. That's right. So it does change. Denise, you had a flashback. I started looking at your eye. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was thinking back on the fact of how you said how people interact with you and how you don't leave with that. And, um, you know, I have a Ph.D. And I've noticed that when we're first sitting in there talking, they're like, oh, you're, the do you know, his daughter. And then I start to question. I actually had a couple of doctors say to me, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I have a Ph.D. in microbiology and immunology. They go, oh. Oh. No, and that's what they said verbally. They went, oh, shh. <laughs> Ooh. You know, that's, that's, and, that's actually what they said. And, that was a thought bubble. Oh, yeah. But what came out was, ooh. And you know what's really interesting is then they start to question your pedigree. They're like, well, where'd you get your PhD from? And I said, University of Michigan. They go, oh. <laughs> no, -uh, that's what they went, oh. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. So it's really interesting when you talk about this because how you come in, yep. they come in with this idea that they're authority and a lot of patients will just take it. But when you have individuals like ourselves who are in those rooms with them and we start to challenge, yep. they do start to say, well, what, what is your expertise? Yep. You know, and then when you do throw it, they go, oh, well, okay, I see we can't BS you here. So there this is go. where you start to see the change. This is why... We try to provide these resources because not go. everyone's fortunate to have a lawyer. Not everyone's you know, fortunate to have someone with a medical experience mm -hmm. in the room with them. So if you have these types of opportunities or resources, this can help anyone in that conversation. See, my advantage is they like, you that dude from TV, right? Unfiltered. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, there's a whole bunch of people I can call, so don't act a fool. So yes, I will. I will lead with it, Marsha. I will. Okay. I will lead with okay. it. Okay, right. And then if they don't know, I'm gonna wear my shirt, my my show shirt, Roland Martin Unfiltered TV Show. <laughs> like, and then he looked like I'm like, mm-hmm. I ain't wearing it. And like, you are the Roland Martin in this shirt. 
So That's My Word is a campaign. And it, it provides uh, information and resources to the black community to help you self-advocate. It's about making a myeloma promise. Okay, we're over in this corner. Everyone can make a myeloma promise. Here's the QR code you can scan. And it's all about what you will do for your family, for your community, as it relates to myeloma. Maybe it's sharing, maybe it's talking to your family, maybe it's going out and going to events, whatever it is, make sure you come back there and make your myeloma promise. See, Marcia, she studied. Because I was, that was the last thing I was supposed to say. Oh, sorry. So Marsha read her notes. You did the homework. I bet you were up all last night reading your cute cards. <laughs> all right, y'all. So do this. So hold your phone up. Uh, and first of all, I always love what he would say. Use a QR code. Who knows what the hell a QR code is? <laughs> Some of y'all like, I have no idea. Okay, all right. So hold your phone up. Open up your camera. And then point your point, just point your camera to the screen. A link will come on. Just tap that link. It will actually take you to the website. So this is a QR code. And so it will take you there. Uh, you can also go to the Facebook, Instagram uh, pages as well. YouTube, it's at That's My Word MM. That's My Word MM. If you're taking photos today, be sure uh, to tag That's My Word in it. Uh, and as Marsha said, stop by uh, the booth as well. But my last comment here is for everybody here. And you, you heard the consistent theme. No one can be a greater advocate for you or your family than you and your family. Be persistent, be clear, uh, be willing to, act, to uh, access uh, other experts. But remember, we are caring for ourselves and our family. And if they don't care for us, then we have to make sure we do it as well. And that's whether you're black, whether you're white, Latino, Asian, male or female, does not matter. And so please do that uh, because, uh, trust me, uh, you can actually save someone's life by being that angry brother, angry sister, persistent uh, person, and that's critically important. Uh, let me thank uh, the folks at Jansen Hero Collective for us being here as well. I appreciate it, uh, and we will see y'all soon.